Welcome back to Games Rebuild. I'm The Brink, and uh, before we get into this, make sure to subscribe and bash that bell with your crowbar. Um, today, we're going to be doing a news topic. It's something I've been wanting to try, and so uh, like th this video if you like this type of content. Dislike the video if you don't like this. I'm fine going that route. I want to know what you guys want, and also, I enjoy looking through the news, seeing the new stuff. Um, I particularly like Gaben, Lord Gaben, right? So Gabe Newell. Um, and before we get into this article by PC Gamer, I want to just give a little context with Gabe Newell. He was a part of Microsoft. He was, I believe, one of the first like 20, 30, and um, I don't think he was an engineer. I think he was business uh, people, a part of Microsoft when they first launched. So the, re the reason why he was able to make Valve was that he made a ton of money from Microsoft stock. And so when he left Microsoft to form Valve with another co-founder from Microsoft, he was able to make Valve. Now, this is interesting for this time because he has acquired companies, but he does talk about acquiring companies and how it's kind of just like this rat race almost where it's kind of fun for these big companies to just engulf everything else. And I think the Blizzard acquisition was a good thing because I think that company was becoming super toxic. And I think a lot of people agree with that. And I just, it's it's hard because I love Blizzard games. I love my StarCraft. And I was afraid it was going to die. To be honest, I really think they were going to uh, really just drag it into the ground over the next decade. With Microsoft acquiring it, I think it's going to help. I think they're going to have a little bit of road bumps, but I think it's going to help. But this is what Gabe has to say. Um, he's not losing sleep. He's, I mean, there's, there's companies buying, you know, other companies up everywhere uh, with these, with the gaming um, world, right? Sony, Microsoft, um, I believe there's a couple other companies that are just saying, hey, we're not competing by buying companies, but we're buying companies. And it's pretty evident that like everyone's probably a little freaked out right now between the different companies because they don't want to end up with, you know, holding nothing. So I guess the point, all the good games companies are taken. They have nothing to be exclusive. So their device becomes obsolete. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think PlayStation already has so many first party games and Microsoft does ish now. They do now actually with Bethesda. And so this like, People that got mad at uh, Microsoft for buying but Bethesda and maybe even this Blizzard acquisition, they got to understand like Sony's been doing this for decades and they have a huge first party lineup almost every time they do a really well, besides PS5, they had a couple, but they, they usually have a really good lineup of PlayStation exclusives every year. And it's one of the reasons I have a PlayStation 5 and I didn't shoot for an Xbox Series X yet. And partially I'm a PC gamer. Um, I like stories. PlayStation's a good place for that. I, but they are moving over to PC, which makes it even a better time to get a Steam Deck, by the way. So um, this article just really goes over like an uh, interview with Gabe Newell and how he, you know, mentioned he's not losing sleep, right? But this is an interesting one right here. I'm going to quote, read this from Gabe. Uh, I've sat in the boardrooms where people have talked about making decisions about an acquisition because they could fire a bunch of what are called G and A expenses. And it's really, it's like, really, that's what your strategy is. When you're here synergy, what is really, what it really means is you're going to fire a bunch of middle managers who are overhead. Somebody whips out a spreadsheet and I'm like, yeah, but I don't think you understand how many of your core developers and engineers you're going to lose because of the disruptions. You have this completely unrealistic view of what's going to actually happen that's motivating these decisions. And I full on agree as being a software engineer, um, usually middle management and managers, you have to work with at that level. I have to work with them. I don't work with C the, you know, the CEO or the executives or higher up managers. I work with those. And if I jive with them, if I really have a synergy with them and I feel like they're getting fired unjustly, I'm going to leave. I don't, and especially with this world, you know, if you're a game developer, a game engineer, and you're good, you're going to be wanted by every game company. So you have your choices. That's where my two cents comes in on this article is that I agree with Gabe. I think he's actually very astute. I think he's very, um, that's why Valve and Steam are so good. He's able to focus on, on things and 
he can analyze um, data that he needs to really well. That's my opinion. That being said, they have acquired companies, and I actually think the way they go about acquiring them is the best way. They usually acquire like mod teams or smaller companies to help fulfill a dream that they have. We've gotten Portal, we've gotten Counter Strikes from this, and it's the way they go about it is good. They they're just not an, an all engulfing um, presence like Microsoft or Sony. They have an end game, and they're not really like planning it it seems like they're just like oh cool we like what these guys are doing so we're gonna off make them an offer bring them in and then if they want to leave they can leave they did that with turtle rock they left and i don't know if they left on good terms or not i don't think it was the best at times but they still didn't you know they were fine with them making black for blood i don't think uh, and that and then there's a whole other uh topic on valves you know inside of valve right but i just I think that he has it straight on with this. The acquisitions are a little, I think a little scary for um, these uh, mid-sized to bigger companies that aren't doing them yet. And so that's why you see that happening, but he's not losing sleep over it. Cause first and for foremost, like with valve, they own their games so they can continue making games, you know, fingers crossed. Hopefully they keep on making games. Um, they do own both sides of the market of like, they own the marketplace, I guess, and they can also make games when they want. So they can, and they can always breed new game developers and get modders from the community. And that's the way I like to see it. Get those passionate people out in the community that are making mods that are doing really well, hire them in and make awesome games. That's all I've got to say on this. I, yeah, Gabe has been coming out with a lot of good stuff lately. I really liked it. Uh, one final little thing on this, he also talked about a 50% like transaction frauds. Uh, like it was during, I believe the same interview of uh, Bitcoin. So the reason why he stopped, they don't support cryptocurrency right now is because he, they were finding out through analysis that 50% of the transactions on the Steam store were from Bitcoin and other, I guess, crypto. I didn't even know he supported it. So this is kind of a weird news for me, but we're fraudulent. And that's a hard one to kind of find out if it's fraudulent or not, but there are companies out there that can analyze the blockchain. And so, yeah, I just figured I'd end on that note as kind of a shove it into the Gabe Newell news. So this has been the Gabe Newell hour in seven minutes, eight minutes. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to watch my other videos. I have some Steam Deck stuff. And so uh, catch you guys later. Later!